Hello and welcome to Corona Crisis. My name is David Haythornthwaite and I'm the chairman of AFC Filed. And over the next uh, few weeks and months, uh, I'm hopefully going to take you through what goes on behind the scenes of a non-league football team at times like this. Uh, we're going to discuss all the issues regarding uh, behind the scenes, the players, uh, off-field staff, all the things that contribute to the to the running of the club uh, and how we're dealing with the issues that have been thrown at us on a daily and weekly basis uh, so that it gives you a really good insight to the club uh, and the running of clubs in general. So I look forward to you joining me on this journey. David, thanks for joining us once again as we look behind the scenes at AFC Fylde. During this period, there's been some quite tough decisions for all football clubs, I'm sure. Um, and locally to us, there's been some sad news this week about Wigan. Uh, and I know you'd like to give your thoughts on that. Well, you know, Adam, we, uh, when we started this, uh, this whole series, uh, it, 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 very early doors, we talked, didn't we, about the impact of coronavirus on the football club. Uh, and, and particularly the impact of coronavirus with regard to the fact is, is total loss of income, you know, loss of income, but you're still having to, to pay people. And, and where that hits hardest uh, is uh, in basically higher up the league you go. Okay, Premier League clubs pretty well protected, uh, championship clubs not too bad but still precarious and the lower down it gets worse now it's interesting um, that uh, you know when you look at the Wigan situation it's important to understand why the difference is so in our case we've been able to furlough all our players uh, as you know we've been able to furlough all our staff and so therefore pretty much uh, in most cases we nearly cover the wages but what we get from the government nearly covers the wages just to remind everybody as pertains to afc file our players and us came to an agreement that we would pay everybody 80 percent of their wages which we're continuing to do so a lot of the times for some players the furlough 80 percent covers that but for our higher paid players it doesn't so you imagine if someone's on a thousand pounds a week yeah uh, you know our best players are, are there no one makes more than that we've been through that then they would get normally through eight eight hundred pounds we guarantee that through this time but we only get 577 is the maximum per week that you can get from the government for any team. So we, in this case, and there's only a few in that area, have to make up the difference every week between the 800 and the 577, yeah? Which is 233, is it? 223, 223. So that's the difference. Imagine the difference, when, Wigan, when you've got, five thousand pounds a week and you only get so if you furlough your players you only get 577 it doesn't matter which club you are or what, what industry so they've got to make up they've still got to pay that player four and a half thousand pounds every single week no income nothing that's the problem and that's the problem that i highlighted you know a long long time ago and a problem that every club's facing now of course a lot of these players on two, three year deals. I mean, Wednesday was a significant day because Wednesday, July the 1st was when all the contracts ended. So any players that have been on contract, I mean, four or five of our players, we've talked about them before. I don't want to bring the names up again, you know, been, been let go. And, and from, from, from Wednesday, you know, don't have a job, aren't being paid. It's not something I'm, I'm proud of, but that's what's happening. And that's happening all over the country. I had an agent, uh, I was told the other day, he's got 62 players on his book which have no contract and no offer of a contract. 62, unheard of. So in the Wigan situation, 
you can imagine that that kind of difference, and I'm talking about, and then you talk about your chief execs, you talk about all the other highly paid players. I mean, these are clubs now which have probably you know, 100, 100 people behind the scenes, backroom staff. So that is the problem and the problem facing everyone. Now, I, I said that we might see some big clubs fall and, and I didn't think I'd ever see Wigan. I didn't think I'd ever see it up there. And I didn't say, think we'd see it quite this fast. So it's, uh, it's wow, it was, it was a real shock to me to hear that. And, and, and also, you know, of, of all the clubs out there, uh, I suppose I resonate a lot in many, many ways with Wigan. I think, and I've said it, in, you know, in the past uh, that, you know, I kind of would like to think I, 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 I've mirrored what Dave Whelan's done in many ways. Uh, I haven't, I haven't got, got close to his achievements, Premier League and winning the FA Cup, but I started in the same vein. I started with the same passion and, uh, you know, I, I, that's the first person I thought of. Uh, you know about I mean Dave's 83 now you know he's he's unfortunately got Alzheimer's uh, but I'm sure that you know and I said to my wife God you know uh, poor old Dave what will he think and you know my wife said well he, you know, he probably won't, won't understand I said well he will understand there are a lot of things you do understand no matter how well you are uh, and, and, and he'll be devastated I'm sure he will because he he, he, he took a little little club playing at old shitty ground those of you ever went there to that ground uh, you know it was the rugby league ground as well it wasn't a football ground really and you know built them a magnificent stadium you know took them to the premier league wow amazing what that man did and and it was funny because we played wigan uh in, in a and i hope they don't mind me saying this but we played wigan in a pre-season uh, well actually fact when we played wigan in the fa cup a couple of years ago and at that time, uh, you know, Gary Cook and, and a few people involved uh, had been bought in, uh, you know, by the Whelan family to sell Wigan at the time. And, uh, and it was, you know, again, I think it's pretty common knowledge now. But, you know, I was asking him at the time, why, what's happened, uh, you know, with Dave? He said, well, you know, Dave, Dave's, Dave's sort of developed uh you know alzheimer's uh, and he's and he's having to hand over the reins and and he's <laughs> as i've said with my with my lovely wife many a time you know it's a very dangerous thing when you have to hand over the reins and, and i'll probably have to do it with my children one day uh because once you do that uh, then you find out all kinds of things that maybe you didn't know about your dad uh and and one of the things they might have suspected about the dad but maybe didn't know about the dad was that he was putting every year six million quid into Wigan just to keep it alive, six million quid. Now I'm putting, as I've said, into, into five, a million quid, right? But six million quid, wow, that's a lot of money. And, and uh, so, but that's the, that's the state of football. And that's some of the things we've talked about. This needs to change, it needs to change. So Dave's putting in six million. Obviously, he can afford to put in six million. He's enjoying himself, isn't he? Putting in six million. He's got a fantastic club. He can go there. I've been, you know, in his boardroom, just like I love my boardroom here. You know, you, you do it because you enjoy it. You know, it's your baby. And, uh, and and Dave, of course, when the family looked at it and they all said, "Well, we could have a lovely villa in Barbados, or we can do this. You know, half a million quid a month. We can do a lot with that." And, we don't really love Wigan the same as my dad did. And then that's why it was put up for sale. And, and these things happen. Uh, and then unfortunately, uh, as, and every time I read about one of these things happening, you know, whether it's Berry, whether it's Bolton, we have the usual sort of tribe, uh, you know, uh, sort of comes out of all the politicians. Well, we need to, you know, look at the ownership and, you know, is it fit for purpose as they call it? And nothing happens. And this Wigan is a good example, isn't it? It was some. It was sold to some Hong Kong conglomerate, uh, who apparently sold it uh, to another Hong Kong conglomerate. Where one of the and I'm only reading what everybody else can read. Uh, another Hong Kong conglomerate who were uh, owned by the same guy. So again, straight away, you know, it's it's a bit dodgy, really. 
Uh, and in simple terms, uh, they'd been putting in the money that was necessary to keep it alive and then just pulled the plug. But that doesn't surprise me, Adam, because whatever level you come into football, whether it's, uh, unless you are super rich, unless you, you know, the, the era of the Q80s, the people who own Man City, or the people who own Liverpool, I mean, serious, serious players. I've said to you before, billionaires, that was the difference with Salford, wasn't it? Peter Lynn, he's a billionaire who owns that club. If you've got real money to burn, you, you, you can do it. But anybody who's got, shall we say, real money not to burn, <laughs> who's a normal person, they come in and they go, oh, football, wow, this is exciting. Yeah, I can own a football club. And one of the stupid things that, I, I, that they gave us a reason, they gave three reasons why they bailed out and they didn't. They said, one is coronavirus, that was a good blame, wasn't it? Two, Brexit, that was another blame. But the best one of the lot was they didn't get in the Premiership fast enough. They didn't get in the Premiership. And that just tells you, it's like the Venkis. Who bought Blackburn. They have no idea, these people. They live in a different world, in a different part of the world, in a different world, and somehow think that somebody comes to them and says, do you want to buy a football club? And great, this will make you a hero. And have no idea, you know, uh, you know, the Venkis must have still rue the day they ever bought Blackburn, I'm sure, I'm sure. Probably don't get out for pride. But a lot of people get out, and uh, and that's the same at our level. It doesn't matter whatever level it is. I'm sure Simon Sadler down the road, you know, he's bought Blackpool. I mean, I've been hearing that there's a lot of cuts going on there. I don't know whether it's true, but I've heard the 60% pay cuts, the captain's left. And that will be, I'm sure, because Simon Sadler's discovered, wow, owning a football club is great, but it's a costly exercise. You are only taking out your pocket. That's all you're doing every week. They're calling up, can you send me a cheque for this? Can you pay this? It's all give, give, give. And of course, after a year, you get tired of it. Yeah, after two years, you get really tired of it. So you find out a lot of people who get involved. Two years is usually a testing time for people. Got a new owner at Stockport. I really, you know, I really hope, uh, hope he does well for, for Stockport County an old established football club, but I'm sure that when he starts writing a lot of those big checks, he's gonna say, what have I got myself into here? And then a lot of people don't get out because of pride, do they? It's a, it's, it's a terrible thing to think that you failed, but it's easy to fail in Hong Kong because nobody knows, nobody knows, nobody knows you. I wouldn't even know who I'm Wigan. I don't think anybody does, so uh, they'll just go about the business. So. There we are, uh, a, 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 a famous football club now. It wasn't famous 25 years ago, it was famous for rugby, but a famous football club has gone to the wall. And I, I don't think it'll be the first, Adam. I really don't. I think you'll see other people. And usually what happens is what one goes, then other people go because it's like, oh, it's that brick, isn't it? That first brick out the dam and then others come. And that's not me wishing it to happen. But we certainly know that, uh, you know, there's a lot of football clubs you, you, you heard about South End, didn't you? You know, Sol Campbell League, whether that's the real reason. But it's, uh, it's precarious and uh, it'll be interesting to see, see what, what happens. Uh, I mean, I was talking to uh, someone the other day and in that fact, uh, talking to Gary Neville. And they've, uh, they've, for example, even with a billionaire running them, they've just canned their academy. They had a really good academy, you know, the idea of get all the Manchester young kids in. You, why, 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 why is it going? It costs them half a million a year. Half a million a year just to run an academy. So good intentions, billionaire running it. Hey, do you know what? We can't afford those things. Sunderland, just been their academy. And Sunderland, I mean, that is Sunderland, the North East, you know, they produce the Charlton brothers, you know, probably two of England's finest ever footballers. That's where you, you know was it, it was like a, a like a mine up there, wasn't it? Producing footballers up there, and they've just been their academy. So there's a lot of things going on in football now where people are looking at the costs, and uh, and there's no doubt, you know, that one of those things is the salary cap that we talked about, and I know that, the, that those conversations are going on uh, in League One and League Two at the moment. So a lot of changes, um, and very 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 sad to see what's happened at Wigan, but uh, it is a consequence of, of, us, of, of football really 
you know, overspending and, and not living within its means.